ADOS or Advanced Driver Assist systems have become very prevalent on most modern vehicles. Systems such as the Blind Spot Monitoring System, which tells you if there's another vehicle in your blind spot, when the repairs are made, sometimes they need to be calibrated. Now sometimes it could be driving down the road, which we call a dynamic recalibration, or you may need a targeting system in the shop called a static calibration. So let's walk through an example static calibration on the blind spot monitor on the Subaru Forester here using the John Bean TruePoint system. Okay, so here we are on the home screen of the TruePoint system. Now you'll notice on the screen we have a workflow. So first one is shop preparation. You want to make sure you check into that, uh, whatever needs to be done there. Vehicle preparation as well. Also need to mount the wheel targets. Now we've already done that for the essence of time here. If you need to know how to do that, there is a demo video built in which you can watch. Next thing we would do is start the ADOS process. Now you can do it multiple different ways. We can ID manually your make model, or there's a built-in VIN scanner so you can scan the barcode on the VIN. Or in this case, this Forester is already loaded in there in my history. So I'll just double click on that and pull that up out of my history. Okay, so this is our vehicle history screen. It shows any reports that may have been generated in past previous calibrations. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna hit use vehicle on the bottom right and that'll load the vehicle into the system. Uh, now, what do I need? What features are installed on this vehicle? So it does have front camera and it does have side and rear radar. So I'll hit next to continue. All right, so the first thing we need to do is perform the alignment verification. Now it has us do a few things with the frame. We can see we're a little outside of that target and the beam needs to be lowered a little bit. So we'll lower the beam down so it can see all the wheel targets. There we go. Now we see all four green check marks on the screen. That indicates it can see all four targets. Now we're a little back and a little bit to the left. So we need to move this frame forward and angle it slightly. Something like that. So once we're in the green, we pause, let the frame settle down, moves to the next screen. Now it wants us to do the rollback, rolling forward and rolling backward on the vehicle, and this will help verify that alignment is correct. So I'll move this around so we can see on the other side of the vehicle. Okay, so the vehicle is already in neutral, so we have to roll forward first. So roll forward until it gets into the green. Then we need to roll it backwards. It's in the green there. There we go, and one more forward. turns green, then we should have green check marks on all four wheels, looks good. Next step when it cycles through is we need to put it in park and put the parking brake on. Okay, so once it's been put in park and the parking brake is set, we'll just hit next and go on to the next procedure. Next procedure is going to be advanced floor level compensation, so it requires a, a special pointer target. So we're gonna go do that counterclockwise around the car. Okay, so we'll take this pointer target and we need to make sure we line it up with the bottom of the wheel and with the existing target that's there. We should get a green check mark when it's done. Okay. Move to the left rear. Same thing. Right rear in front of the target. And right front. Spin this around and now we can start our side and radar calibration. Tells us what we need. We need a stand, a target, where the target needs to be oriented, and a target adapter, and then mount the target. Now that's already out, set up in the back, so we'll just hit next. And we need to position the frame in the proper area. So we'll move it up a little bit. And once we get close, we lock the wheels and we pedal. And let that settle down a bit. And we'll hit next. And we need to raise the beam slightly. There we go. Let it settle. Hit next. And now we have to position our cone pointed at the rear corner of the vehicle. So I'm gonna swing this around so I can see it better. We're doing the driver's side rear radar. 
Now one of the other key points that it notes on the screen is you have to point it at the corner of the bumper, which is where the radar sensor is. Okay, we're in the green, so we can hit next. And then it's going to need to calibrate the height as well. Looks like I'm a little high, so I'll bring it down a smidge. About there. All right, and we are where we need to be. Hit next. And we also need to make sure the area is clear around the rear of the vehicle. And if we hit next again, we now break out the scan tool. Okay, so we have the Apollo D9 connected to the vehicle in order to do the scan tool functions. Now, I do want to mention that any Snap-on scan tool, as long as it has current software, will be able to perform these functions uh, across the board. So it doesn't really matter what Snap-on scan tool you have, Solus or a Modus or a Triton or an Apollo. Any of, the, any of our scan tools will be able to do these functions. You just may, maybe need the targets like we set up before. So in this case, we'll scroll down and find we're doing the left side radar. So back inside radar left says we need to determine the ECU. And then we have codes, data, and of course functional tests. So it's listed under functional tests. We have actuator tests and our radar axis adjustment. That's what we're going to perform, our axis adjustment. It says it requires a radar target. Attempting this test without a correctly placed target will result in clearing the axis alignment value and setting DTCs. So we don't want to do this. We don't want to proceed any further unless we have the target set up like we do. The system will be disabled until adjustment is completed successfully. Refer to service information for correct placement of radar target before beginning this test. So we have the correct placement referring to the true point system. We continue. It turns on the radar and it says the alignment is successful with a zero degree angle gap. Quantity of object reflection 44 dB which is considered good as well. We'll just hit continue and exit the test. Turn the ignition off to complete the procedure also generates a ADOS calibration report for us. So we can save this to the Snap-on Cloud and it will also save to the tool. This allows us to share these with customers or insurance companies for uh, use for proving that we did the recalibration on the vehicle there. Okay, so last thing we need to do is come over to the True Point system and select Procedure Completed. Then we'll select Next. Once we're done with that, we're gonna come up with a Done or Exit. So we'll hit Done. So now we're on the report screen. We have ADOS alignment recalibration report and an alignment and ADOS audit report. So that is a summarized report and a detailed report. Both reports will automatically upload to the Snap-on cloud service as long as the tool is registered with the service and the Wi-Fi is active. Now you can use that Snap-on cloud service to share these files with customers or with insurance companies as you see fit.